Good morning, everyone. Um, hold on a second. I'll turn this on. Your boy Rachel's back. Just woke up. Pretty much got out the shower. I woke up at fucking 4.40, bro. Could not fall back asleep. I was tossing and turning all night. Hold on, I gotta put up my hair, hold on. I should turn on the slightest so much you guys see. I gotta go run, man. I'm not looking forward to it at all. How the fuck? I don't know how I did this, there we go. Yeah, dude, I gotta go run. I don't wanna run. <laughs> and I think it's cold outside. So, uh, twice a week, um, I do, I run. Um, there's a reason why I run. Um, and I do it in the morning. Um, when I train like this, I always, I always run in the morning. Um, I tried to run on an empty stomach, but uh, that doesn't always happen. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, I don't have the food from before in my stomach, you know, and I like to run on an empty stomach. But the distance I gotta run this morning, if I don't put stuff in my stomach, I know I'm not gonna make it. So, I haven't decided what I wanna eat, or I might not even eat. Sometimes I'll just drink coffee. The coffee will hold me over, and uh, it gets my metabolism, you know, on fire kicking. So, that's why I do it a lot. And I don't want to get out this bathroom because it's warm. <laughs> I got the heater blasting right there. I always put the heater on top of this right here so it's not on the floor. In case water spills over the thing, it doesn't mess anything up. But, uh, I do not always turn on the heater before I come in or come out of way. When I get out the bathtub, it's not so cold, you know? But, uh, yeah. Um... We'll go ahead and uh, get ready. Um, I'm gonna be writing some, read some Bible scriptures, so I'm gonna have to turn off the fan. That's fine. I got straight up, went right into the. Uh, oh, shit, it's bright. Went right into the shower, I didn't even turn off the fan. Dude, it was a long night last night, man. It was. It was a long ass night, bro. I don't even know what to do today. I gotta, honestly, it's early as fuck, and I'm only up right now because I gotta go run. <laughs> it's stupid. But I guess I'm supposed to work on that guy's car today at nine, so. I got a lot to do today after that. I plan on getting a lot done today. At least that's the plan. <laughs> Don't always work out like that, though. People, man, I swear. People always fucking... They always do one thing, man. Say one thing and do the other, you know? That's just how it is. It's always like that. It never fails. And I need to change, man. I'm been wearing the same clothes for two days. Same shorts. Man, either. Uh, I'm gonna go run, I'm gonna go sweat, and I already know I'm gonna be sticky. And I just got out of the shower, but I didn't take a shower to take a shower. I, I went in there because my body was aching and fucking I couldn't sleep from tossing and turning all night. And I was, uh, 
I got up at 440 because my legs were locking up. Um, they were cramping up. So I know I'm dehydrated. Um, that's why I woke up early. It's because I was dehydrated. <laughs> um, and I'm having a brain fart. I'm looking for my fucking thermal fucking pants, man. There they are. These things, bro. These dry fit fucking Hurley thermal pants, cold gear. Listen. Best, the best thermals I found, bro. They're amazing, man. Like, like all winter long, I wear, I wear like this brand. These, these black ones, man. I got a couple pair, bro. You got to get them, man. And I wear them under my pants during the winter if you live in anywhere north. And uh, they're always keep you warm, man. Like, no matter what pair of pants you have on, if you have these under there, you're straight. As long as you don't get soaked. But even then, like, I've been soaked, you know. And these have saved me because, like, the pants would be totally wet. But these keep my skin like these are wet too but this is keeping my skin from touching that gene and for some reason that gene material it it gets you colder faster man it does so you gotta you gotta watch be careful man i've been caught out there bro it's not <laughs> listen you know you do not want to be caught out there bro and be frozen it's not good and it's crazy because i've been caught out there like you know, like, close to home, man, but I'm so, like, it's still kind of far, you know, and people fucking lie and fucking don't give you a ride or, you know, or fucking, you know, car broke down or something, man, that shit's happened to me, man, like, in the middle of the winter, a car broke down, nobody want to answer, nobody want to pick up, everybody fucking on their bullshit, you know what I mean, they're all warm and fucking nice and cozy in their house, and I'm over here stuck on the other side of fucking doing a favor for somebody. And now I'm I'm stuck in the hood and ain't got no ride. And I got to walk all the way back in the middle of the hood. I wasn't prepared. Didn't bring a jacket. Didn't bring a hoodie. You know what I mean? I'm fucking walking to a McDonald's, you know, asking for a fucking hoodie because I'm about to die. It's happened. I'm serious. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. You know, it's funny. Out of all the places I've been, you want to know who the friendliest people are and that's helped me the most in, in time of need? Black people. Serious. Black people, man. They're the most considerate people, bro. I'm serious. When it comes down to to emergencies and shit and, like, like really just, like, getting down to the nitty-gritty, dirty work, bro, and just, like, fuck it, let's just do this. Black people, man. I'm telling you, Mexicans. Those are the two cultures, man, that I love. I'm serious. Those, if I could be with blacks and Mexicans the rest of my life and fuck whites, I would. White people, man. There's just something about them. And I'm white, <laughs> which is shitty. <laughs> I wish I was a different color because I'm tired of fucking the way white people act, man. It's serious. Even, my, even in my family, it's like that. I'm serious. It's terrible. Especially when I fell in love with Jesus. Um... It was bad, bro, like, the way my fucking family acted, and friends, too, like, well, they weren't even friends, but just, you know, people I associated with, man, you know, like, from my past, and it's funny, too, because all these people, they see my Facebook blowing up, you know what I mean, they see, they see I'm doing stuff, you know what I mean, and all of a sudden, they want to be part of it, they want to be my friend, like, no, bro, you weren't around before that, and when I'd preach Jesus, especially, like, to this one girl, it's just for instance, you know, she was a friend I grew up with. You know, she acted like she was my friend and family, like kind of like family. I've known her for a long time, but, you know, dude, you're just trying to ride, ride me. No, you're not. No one's riding me. So, yeah. Let me get some word in before, uh... So... I'm going to read this, and this is important to read this. Um, so, this is uh, my favorite, you know, Bible. Um, you can see it's 
been written in many, 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 many times. Um, my journal in it, I spray painted in it. Um, it's my favorite Bible. Um, and it's the remix. Um, we're going to read out of it today. Um, Old Testament, New Testament. You know, I did this custom paint. You know, it's all silver and, like, gold and copper. I even, like, I even, like, hooked it up to where, like, it's soaked in the paper, you know? So when you flip it, it looks old school. Looks like some ancient stuff. Did it on purpose. Some pages are still stuck together, actually. I gotta go through them, and when I get to them out, you know, they'll come apart. Um, but Chronicles, I flipped the Chronicles, I don't know why, I just flipped the Chronicles, and uh, I'm gonna read the introduction. This is another reason why I like this Bible, because um, it's a really good study Bible, first of all, and um, the stuff it says in the beginning before each book you know, because there's 63 books in the original Codex, so, um, which is the oldest uh, Bible known, which is in Russia, it's the Russian Codex, which I'd love to get my hands on, but they would never let me touch that. <laughs> um, so, introduction, it says, 0102 Chronicles. There is always more than one way to tell a story. The story of Israel's king is first narrated in the books of Samuel and Kings. Here is another telling of the story, of the same story, a hundred or so years later, by another voice and from another perspective. Chronicles. Some of the early narratives, some of the earlier narrative is omitted, and there are substantial additions, but it is, recognized, it is recognizably the same story. But Israel's fortunes have changed considerably since the earlier authoritative writing, Genesis through Kings. God's people are in danger of losing touch with what made them God's people in the first place. In retrospect, from the low point in their history in which they now find themselves, it looks very much like a succession of world powers. Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Persia have been calling all the shots. The people of Israel are swamped by alien influences. They are also, it seems, mired in internal religious pettiness. Will they be obliterated? It says, a new writer, it may have been Ezra, took it in hand to tell the old and by now familiar story, but with a new slant. His task was to recover and restore Israel's confidence and obedience as God's people. Remarkably and improbably, considering the political and cultural conditions of the time, the writer insisted with very little hometown support on the core identity of Israel as a worshipping people in the Davidic tradition. And he did it all by writing the book you're about to read. Israel did not finally disappear into the ancient Near East, melting pot of violence and sex and religion. Uh, names launch this story. Hundreds and hundreds of names. Lists of names. Page after page of names. Personal names. There is no true storytelling without names. And this immersion in names calls attention to the individual, the unique, the personal, which is inherent in all spirituality. Uh, this says, nameless genealogies occur in other places in scripture, Genesis, Numbers, Matthews, Luke, but none as extravagantly copious as here. Holy history is not constructed from impersonal forces or abstract ideas. It is woven from names, persons, each one unique. Chronicles erects a solid defense against depersonalized religion. It says, and Chronicles provides a witness to the essential and primary place of accurate worship in human life. The narrative backbone of Chronicles is worship, the place of worship, the Jerusalem temple, the ministers of worship, the priests and the Levites, the musical components of worship, which are both vocal and instrumental, um, which King David set that up, by the way. Um, and it says, and these are authoritative role of King David, the master of worship, who maintains faithfulness and integrity in worship. And the way this story of Israel's past is told, nothing takes precedence over the worship and nurturing and protecting our identity as a people of God. Not politics, not economics, not family, life, not art, and nothing in the preparation for and conduct of worship is too small to be left to whim or chance. Nothing in architecture, personal music, or theology. It says, earlier threats to Israel's identity and survival as a people of God frequently came in the form of hostile outsiders. Egyptians, Canaanites, Philistines, Amalekites, and others. But in this assessment of what matters, right and faithful worship turns out to be what counts most of all. The people of God are not primarily a political entity or a military force or an economic power. They are a holy congregation, diligent in worship. It says, uh, 
To lose touch with the Davidic and Moses-based life of worship is to disintegrate as a holy people. To be, seduced, to be seduced by the popular pagan worship of the surrounding culture is to be obliterated as a holy people. Not many readers of the text will find their names in the list of names in this book. Few worshiping congregations will recognize architectural continuities between the temple and their local church sanctuaries. Not many communities have access to a pool of Levites from which to recruit choirs and appoint leaders in worship. So what's left? Well, worship is left. And names, accurate worship, defined and fed by the God who reveals himself in Jesus Christ. And personal names that add up to a people of God, a holy congregation. Christians have characteristically read and prayed themselves into chronicles in order to stay alert to, be, uh, to the irreducibly personal in all matters of faith and practice. And to maintain a critical awareness in the worship of God is the indispensable foundation for living a whole and redeemed lives. So, you know, all these stories... You know, they give you different perspectives on, you know, of of what it means to live a godly life. And uh, all these, what's crazy to me is all these stories, you know what I mean? They all line up with each other and they're all written from different eras. You know, you're talking like a span of like 700 years. And that's crazy that one person writes, you know, from one book and then writes another book and can sit there and know everything you know what i mean um that just tells you that they they really documented everything man like look man they, you can tell like it tells you the branch of each family the shem branch the hem branch you know that you gotta remember too if you read genesis and you read exodus um god actually um god so i'm not sure if god commanded it or not um, but God was kind of mad because um, they did a census on people and they wanted to know how many people were in Israel. And uh, I forget the whole situation, but God was upset with Moses and because uh, something happened. Um, we'll probably go through this story. But, uh, yeah, they, you know, they did a census of the people, which tells you that, you know, it's they, they knew everything that was going on in their family and in their, in their tribes and, you know, in, in, in the country. And David, you know. David sinned, you know what I mean? He was he wasn't always perfect, you know. He he killed his best friend, man, because he cheated. He he slept with his wife, his best friend's wife while his friend was at war, and he felt so guilty about it. Dude fucking had his best friend killed. It's crazy. And, and instead of having him killed directly, he he felt terrible about it. So he fucking sent 